are we good? Yeah, I think we're good to go. I think we are. We are. Um, so we can start out with the public input statement. Ready? Always. Okay. Uh, the first public input session is a 15 minute, six, 15 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. The speaker will give his her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel cannot be made during public input. And you should click on the link at the top of the agenda to send us your input tonight. We do. Have, yep, we have one piece of public input. Okay. Um, this is from Drew Sampson of Lebanon. Um, he had two two points. One, we urge you to drop the unnecessary mask mandate now. Do not wait for the next school year. The science behind it is highly subjective and is psychologically negatively impacting the children. Number two. We just started hearing a little about critical race theory, CRT, and the 1619 project, and would like to know, is any of this or similar elements been introduced to the school system or planned to be? Thank you, Jess and Drew Sampson. <laughs> the light behind me is strong. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you, like, whoa. Um, so um, we're following the mask mandate because we have to follow the mask mandate, and I don't know that we, you know, I think that's kind of how it rolls with that one. And hopefully they'll be able to lift that mask mandate for then, you know, in for summer school and in the future. So we will do what they tell us. Um, in terms of the other piece of it with this uh, critical race theory and um, the project 1619, we are not specifically doing anything related to that kind of curriculum or or work. We are definitely, as we've talked to you a little bit earlier about, and we're introducing the diversity, equity, inclusion work. It's the, it's basically we want to make sure that our system is welcoming to all and that we are addressing any concerns that might be out there. And um, you got, we have hired consultants. We're working with folks and we're going to be working with the board starting in July. And we've got some good professional development happening um, starting actually um, next week with our with our folks in the district. So nothing honestly controversial, just more about inclusion. So anything else, Audra? You is that pretty much correct? Okay, great. All right. So there's the public input. It looks like that we need the vote. So I'm a little I actually don't fully understand agenda item three. I don't know if it's what we signed earlier. Or I guess we just have to do a, a public vote. You do have to do a public vote. And I just need to read off the totals. And then we need the formal motion. And then I have the checklist that I need to do that um, for how you vote. So the budget passed in all three towns. And we want to actually thank everybody for supporting our schools, especially during this year. This is a very difficult, challenging year. But it took a lot of teamwork and uh, it worked out and we're very excited to um, look to the fall as well and we'll talk a little just a tiny bit about that and under other business. So article one was the, the district budget and um, that total was affirmative um, for 928 votes, negative for 504 and it passed. Article two was for school nutrition and that was 1091 votes, affirmative 404 um, in the negative. So that passed. And Article 3 was um, adult education, and that was 945 affirmative and 546 in the negative, and that passed as well. So what I need to do is you need to verbally say if you approve this um, or not. Do they have to be separate motions? They can be one motion. It's just one check that I need to do. Okay. It's basically allowing you guys to certify the vote. So if someone could make a motion that you are certifying the vote, 
then we'll go through the roll call and everybody can hopefully agree. I'll make that motion that we certify the, the votes for those three articles in all three towns. Okay. I'll second it. Great. And I will, um, I'll just go through who I see here. So um, Nancy Newber, is that under my understanding you have to get individual ones? Okay. Yeah. So Nancy? Yes. Travis? Yes. Lynn? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. Rebecca? Yes. And me? Yes. And is that, am I missing anyone on? I don't see anyone else. That's it. Great. Thank you. Did you get Lynn? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Good. Um, okay. And then did every, have you gotten signatures on that document yet that you needed? If we did, Jen has them. Okay. I have a blank copy. So. Okay. <laughs> um, so that's that for that piece? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well done. And I just want to say that I'm, I was obviously I'm thrilled that the budget passed in all three towns, but it seemed like it was a comfortable, thoughtful margin where obviously people still, you know, put their own thought into it and and voted as you know their conscience. But it was nice to see. Um, it was just nice to see that support support across all three towns. Yeah, yeah. definitely. We agree. Yeah. Um, and okay, so fiscal year 22 subsidy. All right, that's Denise. Do you wanna start with that? Sure, so um, I know that we've talked about this before, but the governor has proposed um, additional funding for schools to bring the funding rate to 55%. It is not officially approved, so we do not have a revised ED 279. Um, but um, one of the things we have to do in the month of June is send the assessments for the fiscal 22 budget to the three towns. So normally what happens is when we look at the local distributive calculation where they assess, you know, where we divide it by towns, we then have to give them more detail about what amount they need to pay us each month. Um, in addition this year, there are new warrant articles that go with that. So previously I had done a spreadsheet and I had sent it out to the towns and that's how they did it. Um, now we have warrants where the board has to approve how much we are sending out to the towns and assessing them. Uh, before we did that, we wanted to have a conversation with you about what your desire is for this additional funding and whether you want to send it back. We have three options. We can receive the money and not spend it, just put it, receive it, and it will go to the fund balance at the end of fiscal 22. And then we have it available for use when we're crafting the fiscal 23 budget. We can um, do, um, we can go back to the voters and say, we want to spend it, and this is the way we want to spend it. Or we can give that extra back to the towns and assess them less. So basically adjust the amount of subsidy um, that we originally did. Now I'm gonna to try to share my screen with you. Let me see if I can do that. Tab. This is, can everyone see that? Yep. Okay, so this yellow cell, the yellow cells are really where we're looking. So this is how uh, the revenue sheet looks um, based on what the voters approved. We were getting 20 million 136 in subsidy and we were assessing the towns 21,586. And this is generally what it looked like. Increases to Berwick, Lebanon and North Berwick, excuse me. Um, so that was the original. Let me go to a revised. And what this would look like is again, this 21,386 is the proposed amount of subsidy for, for the district, which means that the local taxes would decrease from fiscal 21 and be effectively a, a negative 1.85% decrease in taxes to the taxpayers. 
Um, when you go to the Can local decision, um, I'm confused. I, I, my question is like, it's actually, why don't you, I'll ask it at the end. Um, cause it's, I think I'm go ahead. I'll, I'll ask my question later. Um, okay. Um, this is what the new, um, local distributive calculation would be. And we, it, you can see that each town would see a decrease in their contribution to the budget. What was the original one? So the numbers that we're looking at are the, um, the this is the revised as of May 17th, which is what the budget, the, the governor proposed. Okay, so like a person in Berwick would see uh, a 0.17 reduction in their taxes. Um, I am not sure where you're getting the 0. 0.17 from, but this is, this is, these are the decreases to the town. The person, the per it says percent change. Right. So, but so Denise, it would be the change that we would assess to the towns. How those actually filtered down to each individual person might be a little different, but there would be a, a there okay. would be less than, um, what we, what we currently have on the budget. And then if this money comes through and we want to give it back to the towns and not, and, and so we'll just reduce our assessment. And let, yeah, me, um, let me reshare some, let me share in the other thing. I think I forgot to change. I changed tabs for myself and I forgot to change tabs for you all. Hold on one second. Let me show you the revised. That may help. Sorry. My screen. Oh, technology. I thought we were looking at the revised. Okay. <laughs> Um, so this is the revised again, this is, would be, um, additional subsidy. So instead of losing $367,211, we'd be gaining 882,000. Um, again, the taxpayers would see this 20 million three, three, six as the assessment versus, um, which would result in a 1.85 overall. And then the local distributive calculation, again, this number changes. These percentages are just the change from year to year in the in everybody's proration, for lack of a better word. But this is what the towns would see as decreases. And we would get a similar subsidy next year and going forward. In theory, if the governor is changing and bringing everything up to 55%, that is what we're thinking. But at this point, it's just, this is a proposed for us one year change and it affects fiscal 22. And it's not even in effect yet, right? No, it is, I believe it is not in effect but I believe from everything I've heard from both the lawyers and the business managers and everything that this is on track to pass. Um, so what basically what I want to do is I want to, I'm looking for some guidance so that I can prepare these warrant articles to reflect what you uh, would like to do with this money. Does anybody know what we've done with it in the past? I don't remember because this happened before. If I recall, we kept it and stashed it for the following year in the past. And we I know did. we got some we got some negative comments on that as well. But if you don't know if you're gonna get it or not, for sure, I don't think you can apply it to the current year. I mean Well, when will we know? Any ballpark when it's gonna be decided? Um but that's the thing. I don't know. I don't know when the legislative session ends, to be honest. I think it's soon. It is but soon, but that doesn't always mean, you know, they still have to pass the budget and, um, you know, sometimes it'll go later. It is supposed to be in the next couple of weeks, right? It's usually before July. Yeah. I know we've had years past where, you know, I think it, I think it was two years two or three years ago when they went into the next fiscal year. Yeah. Last year was in the new fiscal year for the vote, but um, the last time we got a very late award 
um, if they did it before June 30, I believe. Denise, can you remind us what your, your, you, at the beginning, you said there were three options. Can you just go over those again? Yes. Yeah, so according to Bill Stockmeyer, our attorney, we can do nothing, which means we get the extra revenue in our monthly checks and it just stays in the district and it goes kind of to the bottom line and it becomes part of fund balance at the end of the year. We can um, give, give that money and reduce the assessment to the towns. So instead of um, increasing their assessments this year, they would decrease from the prior year. Or we can choose to spend the money, but we would have to go out and ask the voters to spend the money. Um, do some right down the middle where we're giving some back and keeping some at the same time, or does it have to be all or none? Um, I believe you can do as you wish. Uh, my initial thought is that going back to the towns and adding a vote is not going to, I mean, it's, it's hard enough to get a turnout, you know, at an election, at a local election um, that we just had. So I, I, I feel like the third option would not be, I, I don't feel like we would get a real reflection of how people felt, but I, I may, you know, if it actually meant having to have a vote. Um, I agree with Denise. I think that third option should be off the table. And now to me, it would be the other two. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I'm thinking if maybe if we give them, give them back the money that may help us in the fall when we go to our construction vote. That's a good thought. I didn't think of that. Um, but I, again, though, it might just be where, uh, you know, they're not even going to remember that aspect. That's what I'm thinking. What, what I'm wondering is if, if we, if we add it to the phone balance and then um, use it to basically make every attempt possible next year to have little to no, I don't know how, I don't know what, like per, how it would work out percentage wise, but um, you know, not necessarily spend it, but use it next year to offset any potential increase that we might have had. Um, you know, mm -hmm. will still ultimately benefit the taxpayers because we would be aiming to not increase, have any increase. Um, but uh, I don't know. Just, oh, and here's my, go ahead, go ahead, Nancy. All right, I was just gonna say it. I think it would it'd be a little bit, some good PR for us and maybe bring some more people back on board for the high <laughs> significant increase we're going to be asking for next in the fall. So, but that's just my opinion. I do think we need to be aware that like town managers, people, people are, people are aware that this is happening and are probably going to be interested in how we handle it. Like it's not, it's not, it's not un- it is not an unknown right now that folks are waiting to see if, if and when this goes through. And North North Berwick to that point, Sue, North Berwick yeah. specifically, as soon as they heard, asked when we were going to adjust their assessment. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Denise, that doesn't surprise me. Denise, <laughs> did, our, did, the law, did our lawyers advise us? On how to proceed? Or, or give a suggestion about what others are doing or... They did not. Yeah. I can go back. I can certainly go back and ask more questions. Um, again, this is not something we're looking to sign off on tonight, but in my preparation of the of the documents to certify the assessment, I'll need to have a direction so I can prepare multiple scenarios and we can sign next week the ones we decide to go with. I can certainly ask more questions um, if you have them of the attorneys and get back. Um, 
Yeah. My, you know what, I mean, I'm, yeah, I think that would be great. My thought is if we, um, and I don't, I'm not saying this to be like pessimistic, but I think if we give it back to the towns, I, I think that people at the town will notice, but I, I don't think it's going to buy us an ounce of goodwill when it comes to trying to get, um, you know, construction stuff passed. I, I just don't think there's enough, um, awareness of our budget or any of this stuff. I think people on the board and people on the in the towns will know, but I, I, it, I just think it would, I would be, I, I don't think it's going to get us. I don't think the reason for doing it would be to try to get some, you know, support for those. We can certainly make it a part of the story that we're telling, but I don't mean that. I mean, it really is part of it. I, I don't mean making it up. I just mean it is part of what of the narrative, but I don't, I, if with voters, I, I don't think they're going to see it as the same thing. But if it's, I mean, if the intent of this money is to lower the local tax assessment, then um, that's probably what we should be doing. And that percentage, uh, that percentage decrease is not over this year's taxes. That's a decrease in what the increase would be for next year, right? Did that make sense? Um, <laughs> actually, did make sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, in in the uh, original um, in the original documents, they were seeing an increase from the school district for fiscal twenty two over fiscal twenty one. In the revised version, if you just decided to give it back, there would be a decrease from the school compared to fiscal twenty one. Oh, really? Oh, I thought that was just a decrease on what they were going to have to pay extra next year. Hmm. Good to know. So in this in this document that you see here, um, for example, in Berwick, fiscal 21, we asked eight million one hundred ninety six thousand five hundred twenty six. And for fiscal 22, we'd we'd be asking eight million ten thousand three sixty four. So we'd be asking 186,000 less than we did last year. Gotcha. I, I think I like the idea of splitting it, giving some back to the taxpayers and then keeping some. But does that have to be voted on? Do we, I mean, by the, by the taxpayers, would they have to vote on that or would we just could just do it that way? Um, so what the attorney told me is that uh, he would find it difficult to believe that anyone would have a problem if we lowered the assessments to the towns and the taxpayers. He's not ever seen anyone create an argument <laughs> that we should be charging them more. But we don't have to earmark that money if we kept half of it. Do we have to earmark that and go to vote or uh, can we just keep it and put it in the fund balance? So I think the only reason you would go to vote is if you wanted to spend some of it in fiscal 22, because uh, again, the voters voted on how much money we can spend. So if you wanted to spend more than that, using the, these funds to cover those additional expenses, we would have to go out to a vote. If we are sticking to the same expenditure, just receiving more revenue, then that goes ultimately into fund balance. But what if we're over our allotted fund balance that we're allowed to keep? How does that play out? Um, that plays out that the audit firm writes a comment that says we're over in fund balance and we have three years to figure out how to use that. <laughs> that would be hard. <laughs> there is also, um, just so you know, a one of the bills in the legislature this session has to do with increasing that 3%. I think I've heard something as high as 15% instead of three, um, but there is a bill to increase that amount. Hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't change anything, but I would be a welcome buffer um, just because 3% isn't even a, it's a really, 
it's really weird to like have a limit to how responsible you can be with your money. Right. Yep. And um, it only affects really um, the regional school districts, those that have, uh, that are a, a department like Sanford has a school department. They have, they never fall into that situation because they have the town of Sanford that can hold all their, all the money and, and dole it out to them as needed. Whereas we are standalone. So we, we hit that wall. Cause we're three towns. So we're a district. Correct. Yeah. There's nobody holding money for us or helping us out if we need it or. So you want to give like, me a couple of of a couple of um, things so that I can maybe you know if you want to think on it I can come up with a couple of scenarios with the different uh, paperwork for each and then we can sign. I, I would be interesting, interested to see what it looked like if the amount that we held on to uh, was the amount that would fully fund our fund balance, um, and then uh, I've. I don't know where that would land. I don't know if that's like half or whatever. Um, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we should. Um, I don't think we should keep more than half of it. Uh, I would be interested to know if you know if a split would be. Uh, like I believe the taxpayers would welcome that, but I don't know if the towns are expecting something more. So um, I don't know if anyone has sort of a um, a gauge for that. So I, I personally don't care what the town's expecting. I think we got to do what's best for us because we don't want to give make them feel like they can spend their money because we're going to give them more money back. The other one of the other comments that the attorney did make was that you want to make sure that giving the towns back the money means they're passing it on to taxpayers. Yeah. We can't require them to do that. We can hope that they do that. But that's n there's no guarantee that if we give the money back to the town that they'll you that they will pass it along in lower taxes. Very true. Oh. And that that's my concern with it. And that's kind of where I'm thinking we don't know that this has taken place yet. Um, if it does take place, great. Let's do our due diligence and making sure that we put it into play for next year where because we know that we got it. If we um, give even half and half, we don't know what the town's going to do with it. True. Yeah, I, I didn't I I guess I didn't really realize that it was. I mean, the point of this is to reduce the taxpayer burden. So, yeah, I would, I would definitely want to know that that's what was going to happen. And I, I wouldn't say that that's not what's going to happen. Just we have no control over that. Right. Yeah. I like in talking to North Berwick. It's you know, the the tone of it was we want to pass this along. But I don't know that that's what they would vote to do. You know, I don't know. Are they too late in their process? Like we are too late in our process, right? So do um, we do it and then just do it all next year? Or or do we get some sort of verbal commitment? Do the towns have to, what kind of, they don't have to go to vote. They don't have to go out for a vote if they want to reduce. I mean, they just pass their budget. So like what's their process if they're going to reduce the tax burden? I don't honestly know what their process is. I want to say they may, I think there's something that they need to do when they know how much money they're going to need um, from taxpayers. Is it that they borrow money and pay it back as they collect it? I'm not, I'm not I don't know the town side of it. Well, like I know in Lebanon, we don't even get our, they don't even figure the tax rate and all that stuff till August. So, and, and then we get our, you know, property tax bills, hopefully sometime before October 16th when they're due. <laughs> so I don't think they know. It's until again, they do, they do that commitment that they have to do in August. Is 
I would say it would be maybe helpful if we could at least say that we would um, give mm -hmm. enough back to the town so that it was a zero percent for like it was a flat kind of flat funded so that there wasn't an increase. I don't know. This is all very interesting, honestly, to try to That's navigate. That's what I was thinking, Sue. That's what I was, I was thinking that too. Um, I, I just, I, I just feel like it would, I, I mean, I, comp I it would really bother me if we did this and the taxpayers didn't see a decrease or, you know, a decrease in the increase or whatever it ends up being. Yeah. Um, my, my sense is that, that, that you know that the the folks in towns or that are our town fathers would probably be able, would want to be able to pass that along and mm -hmm. we can clearly say we were able to give back so that it was a zero percent increase um I, I well i don't know that i don't know if we can do it can we do that in all three towns denise um we I think we can do it as a whole. It won't be in all three towns necessarily because of this change in percentages. Yeah. So again, to this um, to this document in the top section. Yeah. Berwick in fiscal 22 is going to have 39.39% of whatever the taxpayer amount is. It's actually a decrease from last year. So they would probably see a decrease. North Berwick is where they would see the increase because their percentage of the whole budget went up a little bit, right? So mm. we can zero it as a whole to the t to the whole district. Right. Um, but it might not hit it, zero. Correct. The board. Yeah. Because if, again, if you look at what North Berwick is getting as a, as money back, it's $69,608. And that's using the whole amount, the whole. Oh. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So we can what? develop a few options, right, Denise, and have them sure. for you guys. And maybe we can recap this so that you guys can think about it. Over when did you decide by? Well, again, if um, I have lots of, um, I have some paperwork that requires some calculations in it for you got for everyone to sign next week. Um, so I can come up with some, if you can give me the scenarios you want, I can create all of those documents. And then next week, if you decide on one of them, we can have Jen send that out so that you can electronically sign it. Um, but it it'll take me a little bit just to to calculate make all those calculations. So, so if I'm hearing everybody, it, it, tell me if if I'm getting this wrong. But it sounds to me like everybody is on board with either having the money go into our fund balance or having some kind of split with the towns. Are those the two scenarios that people seem to be leaning towards, or those are the two scenarios I hear: the fifty fifty split. Um, or all of it in our fund balance. Okay. Does any are we can we give those two scenarios to Denise or does anyone have another one that um, they want to look at? So you don't want there's no op, there's no time where you would want to give all of it back. I don't. I mean, personally, I don't actually have a problem with that unless except that I would want to know that it was going to the taxpayers. Okay, so I can hold it all, I can give it all back. And then as far as the split, Travis, you said a 50-50, are we talking 50-50? Are we talking make it a zero overall increase? Um, what kind of split? I'd like to see 50-50. I'm thinking 50 of the money we receive stays with us and 50% goes back to the three towns divided up, however, you need to divide it up, whether it's thirds or what. Yeah, I would I would split it based on the the district calculation, whatever that is. OK, so I will generate those documents. Um, 
we can, uh, if you can be thinking, and then next week we'll, we can move forward with signing. And so when you have any other questions, let me know. We will and make I can, by next week is what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, we need to. So, and on that note, what I'm hearing is that I really can't skip next week's meeting, which I asked permission from Audra and Sue, and I, I sort of got a, a fuzzy no on that one. <laughs> a fuzzy. I, just, I just sent you the ag possible agenda. <laughs> Deciding on the future of everything, um, <laughs> welcoming new board members. Uh, <laughs> oh, actually, I'm glad you said that. What board, who, what are the, who, what board members should I have on this? Should I, should Joanne be out, even though it's a June meeting, we should, should I have all the new board members listed or not? It's all new board members. All the yeah. old ones are gone. Yeah, last okay. time we got some detail on that. I think Joanne and Estrita might come just for a little bit, but they would, they would be as guests. Okay. And Linda, Linda will be joining us as a guest as well. Okay. Yeah. And then, so we're actually officially down a board member. Okay. Correct. We're working on that. Yep. Yeah, I've already directed a possible replacement to the contact the town to figure out her letter of intent and stuff. Oh, cool. All right. Was that... Is that it for that complicated agenda? Item? I think it is. That's uh, it. Yes. For right now. Building committee update? Sure. So we had a building committee meeting and uh, the CHA went over some of the estimate estimates that they received and as we mentioned I think it was just last week um, that the uh, information came in the estimates came in 15 million, approximately 15 million over the original kind of quote that they gave us way back when. So I did share that document with you earlier, just so you can see it. I didn't think there was enough time to digest it, but just for you to look at, um, the building committee wanted to move ahead, even knowing that the, the money was $15 million more than the original 40, um, to move ahead to start doing some publicity with the intent of going to vote still in the fall. Um, so there were just some things that kind of came up for us as far as um, it's good to get that momentum going and start doing some of that, but we don't have real detailed budget line items from them yet. Um, so there's a little bit of a concern about that. So we just wanted to kind of have um, Travis and Nancy, if you want to just kind of update just how those conversations went at the at the committee, not to put you on the spot, but just um, some of the points that came up for for the committee overall. And then we can just we just want to make sure that we're heading in the direction, not only that the building committee wants to head into, but that we want the board to head into as well. Hmm. It was a depressing meeting. That's all I have to say. Um, and they really, most people thought we need to get out and get ahead of this sooner rather than later. And even though it's the end of school, uh, we want to be having meetings like before July for the public, before everybody goes on vacation. Um, so I assume that they're working hard on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. That's a lot of money. Wow. I think there is some concerns as well about, unfortunately, the timing of things has put us in a place where things are um, priced so much higher than they were, you know, eight months ago even. And so there, I think we actually, Denise and I and I just sat down and we're just talking about it. Like we wanted to make sure the board was okay going out in a time at the highest point of locking stuff in so we just we we i don't know i mean this is like it's it's just a little it's a little unnerving honestly like as we go forward so i just want we just really wanted to make sure that we were as a board everybody was on on board with it um i know yeah. travis and, and nancy both had concerns about the just the timing has is so hard but we don't want to slow down it's it's a it's it's very much a difficult time because if we don't do it, it's going to be more expensive next year. 
So it's like, it's yeah. not like I don't think waiting is going to make any make it any better. So I have a question, um, like I not necessarily to sort of go through this um, sheet in like super detail, but like I would have thought that all of the increases would be in like raw materials and maybe labor, but there's a huge increase in technology. So what is that? What? Why is that a factor or like sort of the what's the reason for the increase in the areas that aren't really like, you know, we've seen a lot of increases because of the pandemic. I don't like for the ones that aren't obviously connected to that. What's that increase like lose the technology line? I think prior to the estimating, they gave us their best kind of guess as to what that would be. And as they've been in conversations and looking at the buildings, they've been able to kind of tease it out a little more. So that's a much more accurate number than just the more global number that they gave us in the beginning. Uh, additionally, um, they are looking at ADA compliance with bathrooms, which didn't happen uh, prior to. That wasn't something that um, came up. And then it became pretty clear as they were going through the new plans that some of the elevators were very old and outdated and it would be in our best interest to um, work through those and, and replace those while we're going through all of this work so that two years after the projects, we don't have to go back out and say, oh, we need 300,000 for this or that. Mm -hmm. So it's been a combination of things. I think it was a very general quote that came in at 40 million. Yeah. I mean, I, I am not on the committee, so I have zero right to say this, but I mean, it's, it's always a little frustrating because, you know, quoting out on a $40 million job is a huge part of what, like, of what it's a huge part of the job. And, uh, you know, to I, I completely understand that in the past year, we've seen a, an enormous difference in the cost of raw materials and, you know, labor is an issue. I absolutely get those things. But I it's I would imagine that you guys would have been very frustrated with other things that should have been maybe included in the original estimates. Like, OK. I'm not going to lie. This has been a very frustrating process and we've dropped the ball uh, some when it comes to this process. Uh, and I kind of voiced that at the last meeting um, because we should have we should have been well ahead of this before we got to where we're at now. Or now we're kind of trying to play catch up and cram it all in in like two weeks, uh, which is not going to be fun. But we have to get we're kind of between a rock and a hard place. We yeah our our towns are growing so much that we do not have the space so we have to move forward with this in hopes that uh that you know the prices will all drop which i highly doubt they will because once they get set at a certain price they're not going to go down nobody's going to um, give you that money back <laughs> but but the hopes is that you know the prices will come down we'll come in way under budget and be able to make that adjustment but uh, where our we don't have the space now uh and it's going to be boiled down to so we're gonna have to start putting trailers out which then is going to be throwing money away for nothing um so I, I you know i'm not happy with the process at all um but we're kind of we're kind of stuck we don't really have much of a choice and i i feel that that might be part of what is playing in on this as well hmm. i i want to just jump in a little bit i think um you know that they were just able now again we have to take into account covid actually did happen we actually had you know this process has been frustrating but part of that frustration really is that it overlapped with everyone being out of commission for a while um so that's really part of it they were not going to be you know they're still working on drawings they're still right now working on budget numbers and i'm feeling you know they they put out 55 million, I'm gonna just ballpark, 55 million as our estimate. Um, I, there are still things that are not in that budget. They have not come and said, this is, the, this is where we think we're gonna be. This is the final number. We still have 
um, to have conversations about the Ryan home purchase of land. We that's not in there. The ADA bathrooms again are not in there for some of the of the buildings. Um, I'm feeling the pressure of having if we're going forward with this, having to have final numbers in this budget vetted by the end of July. And I don't know if in six weeks we are, you know, how do I, I don't know how to vet a 40 or a $55 million budget. Did they think of everything? Did they miss anything? Kind of like with the SRRF. Is there anything that was missed? And that's my, I, I agree we need to go forward. But my concern is that, the, again, as, as Travis mentioned, that the timeline is so compressed. Mm. I don't, I don't know. Well, I mean, we really, and the other thing, the only other option was, and uh, nobody wants to do this, but maybe just do Lebanon and then get portables for the other two towns. But I don't think they would enjoy that. I mean, what else, what are we going to, what can we do? I mean, we're stuck. I mean, the other thing is, is if we were to delay it, the vote to June of next year is six months. That would give six additional months to have community presentations because that's the other big thing, right? We have to get the community behind it. But um, again, what, I might. What is this vote currently scheduled? November. It is the November one. Okay. Yeah. And regardless of keeping it in November or moving it to June, we would do a lot of work this summer and into the fall, regardless of that. Yeah, we're, I, we're scheduled for June. We're yeah. scheduled for in a couple of weeks to set yeah. up the first community forum anyways. Right. So. It's just the concern about the the fact that they have we do not yet have a budget from them. So we cannot yet look through that to make sure that it's accurate. It is accurate. And, and Matt. And yeah. Matt's leaving. And yeah. Matt's leaving. Matt is took the lead uh at the start of this year and he's going to a different company. So, um, yeah, kidding me. So, no. Oh my God. Yeah. So, so there's that piece as well, but we just, it's a lot of money and, um, just the concern about the fact that we don't have that budget from them to look to even start to look at it and have to have it done by July. If we were going in November. That's. Have they said when we will have it? They haven't given us a hard, fast date, but they under I mean, they they understand the timeliness of it, but they have not given us a date. And I think well, honestly, any leverage at all to say, like, look at where we are. I know we agreed to go with you, but this is not working. Like, do we have any leverage of any kind? Not a lot. No, no, not a lot. Wow. Hmm. So I know one of the one of the frustrating things I had. We had a meeting in January, and we had a timeline all laid out, ready to follow, and that included being ready to go for um, the November ballot. And by January, COVID was slow enough that we could have moved forward, and we didn't meet those deadlines at all. Uh, and now we're trying to play catch up and trying to get this squeezed in so, uh, we don't really have a choice but to go in my opinion we have to move forward with this so we're gonna be wasting money with trailers on on school property denise were you gonna say something denise mallet um no that's okay hmm. there's no good answer that's for sure what do you need from us, from the board? Mostly we just wanted you to be aware of the struggle that we're looking at. That, um, that I mean, I understand where Travis is coming from 100%, but um, I, um, I'm concerned about having true numbers for what we're, we're, what we're gonna be putting out there. I, I have no problem with having our community forum starting June 20, Third, I think is what they're doing um, to get the word out and to have to talk to people. 
that's not a problem. Um, but I am concerned about meeting deadlines in terms of for the warrants for the vote in November with accurate figures. Um, that's what I'm yeah. concerned about. And that's and, the end of July? Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, the way that you back things up to have a November, there's like all these things that need to happen ahead of it. July is really, uh, and does the, do they, are they willing to say yes, like we're, you know, do they give you any confidence that we can do this? They can give you the numbers by then? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't, I've, as much as I think Travis is frustrated with the committee or with us in particular, I guess, I'm frustrated with the company that is not really providing the details that we've asked them to. So. Yeah, no, I, I'll re, I, that's who I'm frustrated with. Yeah. They're the ones that came up with the schedule and they dropped the ball and they're not following it. Yeah. You know? So, you know, we, yeah, we should have probably been on top of them a little bit more, but they're the ones that have completely screwed us on this situation. Well, I mean, that's what we hired them for was to be able to, to, to lead this process through. And we, we are not feeling, so I'm just worried about it. I'm just worried. We have, no, we have no leverage to make that happen. So how did the penalties built into the contract with them that they had to meet deadlines or they get paid less? Well, the, it, the process is just typically that those are the deadlines that are built into the contractors contracts, not necessarily the architects who are, who are helping us develop the contract. So I hear what you're saying, Lynn, but it's not typically that like, usually there are partners and we're moving forward in a good way. I think this has been difficult and we are just trying to navigate it. Um, and so, yeah, I think we just needed you to be aware and I think we'll work really hard to try to pull this off. Um, but be just, just, just be, as long as you're aware <laughs> and we'll, and we'll do that. I think we'll do the community pieces without a problem and we'll put it out there. And I want to hear what the community has to say about this whole idea. Um, you know, because it's a big process for the district. Yeah. Well, not just that. I also want to see what they present because yeah. I'm concerned on how they're going to present. And I want to see how they're going to present and try and sell it. Yeah. Yeah. So. So our little meeting that was supposed to be 20 minutes is almost an hour. I'm sorry. Sorry. Do we have any other, anything else? Sure. Just very quickly. Um, the good news is that in the fall, as of yesterday, in the fall, um, we don't have to adhere to any social distancing, which significantly impacts us in a very positive way with cafeterias, with lunches, um, with all of that. So that's great. It's great news. Um, in the summertime for summer programming, we still do need to have the six foot um, distancing for lunches, but um, the best news is for moving ahead to the fall. That's great. And then just a couple others, um, we, if possible, we would like to do in person next week at the meeting. We will have our new board members, we'll invite them to come to the meeting. We do have Joanne and Estrita and Linda available to come in for the beginning of that. So just um, if everybody's able to do that, I think that would be nice. I hear you, loud and clear. Okay. <laughs> I've had such good intentions here. It's like the only meeting that I. No, I don't. I don't mean. That's not what I meant. I just meant in person versus remote. But just do it, Denise. Yeah, seriously, Denise. We'll be fine, and we can yeah. weigh in ahead of time regarding yes. the direction of things. So yes. it'll be all right. Yes, yeah. I'll be there. Uh, I have one other regarding the graduation. Uh, we. In, uh, we've gotten a lot of negative publicity lately from the school district on some of the decisions that are being made and some of the communications that are gone out. Uh, but probably one of the biggest ones that I'm hearing lately is the decorating of the caps. And as a board, are we allowed to waive that so that as long as they're respectable, that we can allow them to decorate? Because I can tell you right now, they're already almost all decorated. I, uh, I would, I personally would risk leave that up to the high school. The kids are going to do what they're going to do, Travis, as long as people aren't kicked out of graduation, you know, it's, 
My understanding is that it's the same policy every year and yeah, this isn't this is nothing different than we've always done. It also happens at like every school everywhere. And yeah, true. You know, I, I think people are gonna do what they want to do. I personally would rather just leave this up to the high school um to manage. That's just me personally. But I well, but but I'm hearing it's also as a board that are what put these out. And I know one year we made that adjustment as a board to allow that for something. I don't remember what now, but we had an issue one year already. So that's why I brought it up tonight. With decorating graduation caps? You know, with the graduation procedures in that aspect. And that's one of them. Oh, I thought, I mean, it, I think it was just last year when we were trying to figure out what on earth to do for graduation, but I don't remember, I don't know. Well, Sue, you, Sue, you have the historical, some historical yeah. piece. So typically, over time, it's always basically been the same structure. You know, we've had, I think what you're talking about, Travis, is, is that, mm, I'm not even sure how many years ago, five or six years ago, maybe seven, we had moved from white for the yeah. ladies and, and maroon for the men to just all maroon, just to make it simpler um, across the board. And there was some um push back on that but i don't believe i believe that information came to the board but the board still left it to the to the high school to follow their procedures and leave it at that um so i mean this is not unusual i mean the 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 the, the, the questioning about whether or not to decorate the caps has been it comes up every now and then um we've just kind of a lot we've just basically stuck to the 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 ceremonial piece of it and trying to keep it fairly you know fairly serious and left to that and we all know that that doesn't always happen that things happen at graduation when the beach balls come out and the and those were not those are not allowed either but but they have happened <laughs> so you know I I don't I don't really want to make this into something bigger than it needs to be it's totally um, I don't know it's it's a it's a hard one. I would very much like to not see a single kid removed from graduation, you know, unless it was something egregious. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't yeah. really want to overrule their policy. And I think the other issue that Travis didn't mention is that the kids picked up their caps and gowns, and then it wasn't until a day later that they were actually given that information. So. Yeah. That was definitely, that I think is the communication piece. Not to say that if it had come out before, we wouldn't have still had pushback, right. but there are these, they're literally kids that have spent an entire day personalizing yeah. their maps. And, you know, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I guess I would maybe just say, I would second that, let's just make sure that the admin knows that the communication was out of order and therefore there are a lot of people that did decorate their caps because they hadn't been told otherwise. So it would be, I think, in my opinion, and Travis, I'm guessing you would agree that highly inappropriate to have any kind of discipline for that, um, given that they weren't actually told that instruction, you know. So if the high school wants to drop that rule, awesome. I would just personally like it to come from them and not have the board involved, but that's that's just me. Okay. But the order of communication was um, most definitely the issue. Got it. And that's not the that's not the kid's fault. Okay. Okay. I have I have one other other, and it's a question. Um. I thought on administrate when we have administrative openings. Didn't we used to have a school board member on the interview or the, or the yeah, the interview commit, committee? If, it, if it's been principal or like directors, yes. And we haven't hit that point yet that we've been doing some of those final interviews. We had an initial round for mm -hmm. um, high school principal mm -hmm. and then we were going to have board representation at that second round. We haven't hit it yet. Okay. Um, but yes, the plan would be to, okay. to have for principal and directors, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Yep, that's right. Just checking. <laughs> and you have to approve them as well at a board meeting oh. this summer. Like I don't, ha I, you know how I can um, hire the teacher, do the final. Right, 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 right. We can't do that for right, right. you. We'll call meetings. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that just reminds me that we do need to schedule a date for the July retreat, and I'll have Jen reshare the document she sh the form that she shared a couple a few weeks back, just to make sure that um, you can look at your schedule and see if there's a date that works better now that we have some newly elected members. We'll include them as well. Okay. Can I just go back to Travis's point? Um, can can we just get a, can you guys let us know for sure that you will bring the board's concerns to admin? We will, and they, they didn't want to get a board thing. That I just didn't want us to be making a decision at that level, but I would agree with Travis as far as the, you know, importance of it. Yes, and they understand the timing. They're very clear about the timing of the communication. Yes, the caps and gongs, yes, they are. Okay, and they understand the yep. yeah. what sort of cause. Yep. yep, they do. And are they considering making any changes or... This, um, <laughs> I don't know if how how much they're considering that piece. Um, we did get that guidance from the law firm about the monitoring and how hard it is to look at some of the innuendos that can be in and how that can be harmful to some students. Um, so that's the angle they've taken student safety, you know, that angle of the student safety and being respectful of all. Um, so they are going to potentially, what are they going to do if somebody's got a decorated cap? Well, <laughs> I, I think that it's fair to say that we're not looking to eliminate seniors from their graduation ceremony. Yes. <laughs> well, we shouldn't be forcing them to switch their caps out either, unless it's a uh, cap that is not political and I can't say politically correct just not a respectable yeah. cap it's appropriate you know yeah uh, the bottom line is, that's the word I wanted <laughs> it's one more to, just to be honest with you guys it's one more thing for this administrative team to have to look at in a very busy time frame in a graduation piece it that is why in the past we have asked not to have caps get decorated because it's just one more thing all right who's gonna all check out all the caps and get you know they've already they already have a lot to do so we're not we understand where the communication piece broke down and we understand all that and we'll go forward you know we're not going to be we're not looking to cause more angst so just one of those things looks like the weather's going to be perfect one can hope <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Okay. It's going to be a great day. It, everybody's going to be super happy. You know what I mean? It's going to be a beautiful day. Um, and it'll be exciting that these kids can have a pretty typical graduation ceremony. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? No. Motion to adjourn, somebody. To adjourn. <laughs> I'll make the motion that we adjourn. I'll second it. All right. All in favor? Yep. All right. Thanks, Bye. guys. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Thanks, Aaron.